Sponsored by Local Touch Online, a free online magazine that has an exclusive article by Pop Culture Geekery every month. Hello and welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Geekery. I'm Joe Solis and I've got a uh, another co-star here today. This is actually Lila, who you have seen in a lot of our skits. So say hi, Lila. Hola, amigo. <laughs> Just the one person? The one amigo? <laughs> <laughs> the one amigo. There's only one of you. <laughs> so... Um, so Lila really wanted to uh, review it with us, so we're going to go over it chapter two today, and we are going to talk about spoilers because we figure it's been over a week. So hopefully you've seen it, or if you haven't seen this one, you've at least seen the miniseries from 1990, or maybe you read the book once upon a time if you had enough time to read over a thousand pages. So, um, yep, <laughs> yep. Oh dang. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it was going to be longer according to Stephen King. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so this one, um, this one is part two to the the remake that we had uh, in 2017. Uh, we we get a lot of the same uh, creative team back. We get the same director, who I hope you say his name right is Andres Muschietti, <laughs> and uh, we get uh, a slew of of, of well known actors to come in and play the adult versions of the kids uh, who were portrayed in the first movie. Um, and then some of the, uh, well, all the kids are back, uh, but with a lot of CGI work to them. <laughs> yeah, I really didn't notice that, like, at all. Um, you can notice it a bit on Richie with the eyes, but mm -hmm. for the most part, I didn't really notice anything. Mm -hmm. You might have noticed it a bit more than me, because I'm blind. <laughs> like... No, it, it was definitely, yeah, Richie was pretty obvious, uh, Ben a little bit too. Uh, most of the other ones I didn't really notice much, but I mean, uh, you know, nowadays it's not uncommon for them to use de-aging technology as we've seen in some of the Marvel That's movies. One thing I wanted to set up, which was actually unique, I didn't learn this till today, was that you have also seen the 1990 miniseries from back in the day, right? Yes, I did actually. The funny thing is, I saw the 2017 before I saw the miniseries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so how did that how did that come out when you're going back and watching something that's obviously way outdated for now? <laughs> it was different, like I don't know how to explain it really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kinda like I would assume kinda like when I would go back and watch maybe an old an old black and white movie, you know, where you kinda have to just be like, Yeah, I appreciate it for the time, but that's about it. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much me with the miniseries. Like, I really didn't like the miniseries that much because I felt like it went too slow for me. Mm -hmm. That's why I like the newer ones better. I feel like they did better separating the two instead of putting it all in the one movie because it's kind of overwhelming that way, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Actually, a quick little side note I didn't think about, but I just read today that the director is seriously considering doing a supercut where he wants to do both movies are all in one with a few new scenes he said uh, but he's not sure if the studio is going to allow that or not so so you might get your wish for just one big long movie <laughs> so <laughs> yes man yes <laughs> one big long movie wonderful but um but i know that uh so you said that this one was uh very stressful for you uh st starting from the opening scene which is actually kind of a point of controversy but uh mm -hmm. you want to talk about that opening scene a little bit and why why it bothered you but it it definitely hit hard mm -hmm. like it was very powerful beginning mm -hmm. it was something i didn't expect to see cuz i didn't read the novel which apparently it was in the novel it was just Boom! <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty brutal. I know a lot of people are uh, are, are giving it flack for that. Um, but yeah, it's my understanding that it, it was also in the novel because neither one of us obviously have read the novel. Uh, so you know, my my knowledge of this of this world goes just from the the nineteen ninety miniseries and then what I've seen in these movies. And then I'll, obviously I researched on my own to see what exactly they tried to keep the same. Which I I understand that with this remake they tried to keep it closer to the book. The 1990 miniseries. So, um, so yeah, I mean, definitely a shocking beginning. I mean, at first I didn't know, you know, what what the purpose was, but then 
then I realized, obviously, they're just trying to show that Pennywise is back and people are starting to die again. So, and that, of course, sets up, you know, um, you know, the character of Mike Hanlon, uh, who gets everybody back together. Uh, the here at the beginning where they were kind of showing each of the adults and getting them back together, it seemed a little a little rushed to me. Uh, what did you think about that? It was sort of rushed. Like, who is the person before Richie that? That he got back. I think uh, it was um, the one with the inhaler. Uh, what's Eddie. Yeah. Yes, Eddie. <laughs> and like it went from Eddie car crashing to boom, Richie throwing up, and it's like, yeah. oh, that's a scene yeah. I didn't need to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you know you get to see um, you know Bill. Bill is a novelist. Um, you know, and and he's he's on a movie set, and apparently his wife is an actress, and uh, they don't like his ending, and that's the beginning of the ongoing joke in this. Uh, this uh, movie that um, you know that the, his endings are bad, and obviously that's a, a jab at Stephen King because a lot of people have always given him crap about you know that his that his endings are not very good. So, so I, I did appreciate the joke at first, um, you know, and actually later on Stephen King himself actually shows up and uh, participates in the jokes. So I thought that was I thought that was uh, you know being a good sport, I guess. So, yeah, it was the. Um... I believe he was in the shop where mm-hmm. Bill was trying to get silver back. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. See, there's so <laughs> much stuff because because for for me, I know you only saw the miniseries once, but like I grew up rewatching the miniseries because you know I recorded it on VHS. Yes, I'm dating myself, <laughs> and I would just you know rewatch it. And even back then, you know, I always liked the first half better. Uh, you know, uh, the, the the original miniseries was a little bit different. The the cast for the adults was already in place uh, when they filmed the entire miniseries, so so they didn't have this issue of obviously the kids growing up within two years of filming the two films like this one had. So um, so that is that is one thing that that was different here is that you know the first film uh, completely focused on the kids uh, because there were no adult actors. So this time. You know the adult actors do get more of the focus, uh, but we do get some uh, some flashbacks with the kids as well. Um, let's see here. So the so then obviously all the other uh, adults come back together except for Stanley. <laughs> so I'll let you talk about that a little bit. Uh, Stanley. So his death was a bit different from the miniseries. Uh, he did still slit his wrist. It was still in the bathroom. Oh, I'm sorry. I touched you. <laughs> it was still in the bathroom. Uh, except the difference here was there was a message written on the wall in the miniseries, while in this one there was not. Stanley went and wrote letters to each and every one of the Losers Club and sent them out. Mm-hmm. Which somehow made it to them after everything was said and done. <laughs> so I know some people have questioned that. Um so then we have the the scene with the uh, at the Chinese restaurant, which is actually where all the adult actors get to come together finally. And you know, as far as the characters, they are reconnecting, but it's the first time we see them all together as adults. Um, so that this was the scene that was either gonna, you know, make or break these actors, I think, in these roles because you had to believe that yes, these are the older versions of the kids that we saw in the first movie. And this one, I found myself like smiling and I just, I thought it was great the way that everybody was just messing with each other, especially uh, Bill Hader as Richie. Uh, He was, he was really good. And I thought, I thought he kind of just brought it all together. He was almost the, the voice of reason for the audience too. Like he would, he would point out things that the audience are pretty like, what's this about? And, And he, he would do that. So so what what did you think about that scene before the craziness happens? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really liked that scene. Uh, it made it feel like you were like actually there, like joking mm-hmm. around with all of them. And you know, I it'd be cool to have friends like them. You yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you ever you know you ever get chased by a killer clown, then you know you can depend on them <laughs> to come back later. Well, kind of depend on them. That was the whole point. Is that some of them like didn't even know where they were back, but. You know, that's when the craziness starts, uh, and I'll, I'll let you talk about the craziness, because I know it freaked you out. <laughs> yeah, it sort of did. Um, the fortune cookie thing, that was in the miniseries, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, 
I saw it coming, and then, like, the fortune cookies, they're going all crazy. Then this freaking thing with a baby head <laughs> pops out. That scared the crap out of me. <laughs> like, that was... Mm. <laughs> I was not expecting the baby head thing. And normally, i not really attached to children in uh, movies, except for, obviously, the loser gang, because I love them. But, like, the babies or anything else like that i'm not really attached to it it and i don't really get scared by those things it's just that was scary (laughs) yeah and and that one was was unique to that scene because uh if you remember from the 1990 series there was a lot of stuff that was repeated here like the the eyeball in the fortune cookie although this one had tentacles you know it's like they had to they kind of had to up their game for each one although the baby bird was still basically the same except he flopped around more on this one and then I think we had the bat wing in the original or something close to it or one with the spider legs or something. Uh, the the little children's heads floating in the aquariums in the background was definitely new. <laughs> yeah, that was new. Um, that didn't, that was, who got scared by that again? I think it was. Who, what do you mean? Someone bumped into it and got scared by it. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure because that's when, I mean, all hell broke loose, literally. So yeah. so after the dinner and all the craziness with Richie yelling at some kid, um, they go outside. They're all discussing, like, what's going to happen. A lot of them choose to leave except for, obviously, Bill and Mike, where Mike takes Bill back to his place and shows him this Indian totem looking thing. And shows him this entire flashback about how Pennywise was created, how he got here, and his really his origins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and surprisingly, this is the part that they left out in the original miniseries because I'm sure they figured it would go a little bit too out there for most audiences. But this time they, they kept it in there from the book because for those of you who, who know Stephen King or have at least researched his world, his own universe he's created, it gets pretty far out there. Um so I feel like they, they kept the stuff that that was still relatively easy to understand. I mean, basically, yeah, like you said, you know, Pennywise is an intergalactic being, crashed the earth, feeds on fear, and that that's his whole that's his whole thing. So but apparently we get, they got into this whole thing where the you know, there's a Native American ritual called the ritual of, of Chud or Chud, I don't know how you say it. <laughs> um, where Mike did all this research and found out that that's one way they could contain him. Um which I actually just remember there's a twist with that at the end, isn't there? Remember <laughs> how they found out that Mike was lying about this the whole time? Oh, yeah, where um, where Pennywise did eventually get released from that thing, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure, and, like, stabbed all their heads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but way before we find that out, uh, the whole thing is Mike tells each of the, the losers club that they have to find a token from their childhood and that they have to split up to do so. So this is basically where each of the characters um, goes and gets their token. And, of course, each one has their encounter with Pennywise. So uh, so let's just go over each of those real quick. Um, the first one was Beverly. And that was the scene that scared me the most. <laughs> uh, she had dug into the wall, found the poem where it's like, January Ambers, some (laughs) hair fire, thingamajigger. Uh, (laughs) Beautiful poetry. (laughs) I I know. Did did I tell you I practice poetry, Joe? (laughs) I I just heard it. (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) Um, And then so after that, we we have Eddie going to retrieve his inhaler in the the pharmacy. So this was a scene that, that was interesting because in the original miniseries, they played it a little bit different to where... Um, I don't remember if as kids, Eddie found out that, that his inhaler was just a placebo, uh, and was just water. That was his, his famous line in the original, you know, this is water, you know, or this, no, this is battery acid because he, he tried, I don't know why it works on Pennywise, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently talking to Pennywise works on him in different ways as we'll find out when we talk about the end of this movie. But, uh, but in that one, um, the pharmacist had actually developed like Alzheimer's uh, or something to where he, he wasn't really remembering anything anymore. But when the adult Eddie went to go talk to him, Pennywise possessed the pharmacist. And that's, you know, that was like the freaky scene that actually didn't have any effects. It was literally just the old man just talking <laughs> like Pennywise. Yeah. Um, and then that's, that's where he was telling, you know, that it was just water. Uh, but in this one, we did have an old pharmacist who looked 
really weird and i was expecting for it to be pennywise but they never show that really was him or not um and obviously that's when eddie goes and you know encounters the the vision of the oh no that's later sorry but anyway he gets his inhaler um then we move on to uh to bill and uh (laughs) this is the one that i've heard a lot of people talk about uh he ends up with georgie's boat because he tries to save a modern day kid from pennywise and uh, he goes back to the storm drain and he actually ends up with georgie's boat and um so this is where I've heard people argue with like, why would Pennywise give him one of the tokens that he needs to, to be defeated? But I don't think Pennywise knew what they were doing. Do you think he did? I feel like he kind of did somewhat. Cause like he's sort of kind of watching them all, you know, mm-hmm. he like knows like their every step, what they're doing. He sends them messages. He gives them all these hallucinations. I kind of felt like he knew what they were doing, but kind of didn't at the same time. That or Pennywise is like, here, I want to die and give him the boat. <laughs> yeah, because I don't, I mean, Pennywise definitely has a lot of powers that are inexplicable, but I don't think he's omniscient. I, I feel like, I feel like in the order that we saw him attack the Losers Club is the order that he was having to focus on each of them. Um, because like after that, well, I don't think Mike didn't have to do anything dramatic to get the rock, right? Uh, yeah. And then you know, they they kept Stanley's shower cap from the uh, from the little hidden uh, hidden uh, camp that they had. Um, and then Richie's with the game token. Oh yeah, Richie. Yeah. That delved into a lot. That's where we started like getting learning about his dirty little secret. Um, <laughs> that was a big twist, though. Honestly, mm-hmm. I felt like. Yeah, yeah, and that was definitely something that that was not in the original miniseries, and I and I know it wasn't in the novel only because Stephen King came out and said that he supported the decision to to change that uh, and make that part of Richie's character. So that was pretty a pretty interesting change, and it does kind of tie back to the beginning of the movie, which is probably why they did it. Uh, you know, showing that kind of you know evil was was uh, you know taking over Derry and and nobody was safe basically. And that Pennywise would try to use shame and ridicule against you uh, for stuff like that. And then the last one was Ben with the yearbook page. But I, I think that was just in his wallet. There was nothing. I don't think yeah. he had to go through anything dramatic for that. There was that really dramatic flashback with Ben and Beverly in the school. Where Beverly's like, oh, you're a fat yeah. boy. I wouldn't love you at all. And her <laughs> hair turns into... Into winter fire. Into winter fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's when Pennywise decided to take Ben's poem literally. <laughs> but uh, one one thing too that they kind of threw in here, like literally, it felt it felt really just thrown in was the return of of the bully Henry Bowers. Um, that was one thing I've got to say. I I really did I really did like the original actor who played Henry Bowers more. I just feel like he was. He just felt like more of a threat and more ingrained. This one, I mean, he did a good job, but especially here in part two with the adult Henry Bowers, it just kind of felt like, oh, we need to put Henry Bowers in here. Uh, here he is, you know. Yeah. What did you think about him? Um, He still sort of kept his insanity trait thing. In this one, he felt very much like a sidekick to Pennywise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, this was the Harley Quinn. <laughs> For Pennywise. <laughs> With a mullet. <laughs> With a mullet that he never cut. <laughs> yeah, and, and the funny thing is, even in the original, that that's actually a good way to put it. He kind of was mm-hmm. Pennywise's sidekick. He was meant to start messing with the, the Losers Club before Pennywise got to them. But that's the thing here. The only things he gets to do, I mean, it's dramatic. Obviously, he stabs Eddie in the face. Mm-hmm. Um and then, but then he attacks Mike, and Richie ends up killing him, and that was it, you know. And so it just, it just felt like, like they, they knew they had to have him in there, but they just resolved him real too quick. And that's what's so funny about this movie being almost three hours. You know, we were in a hurry to introduce the adults, we're in a hurry to deal with Henry Bauer. So then it's like you're, you're, you're backtracking. You're like, well, where's all this time going? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of sad I didn't spend more time on Henry because mm-hmm. he had played a big part in the 2017 film, like being the bully. And really just traumatizing them. Yeah. yeah. So that was interesting. Yeah. So, um, but then, you know, obviously by the time we get to the end and they, they come back together and they got to go back to the haunted house um, where they are uh, attacked by one of your other freaky moments, which is. 
Stanley's head. <laughs> oh yeah, Stanley's head. I kind of forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, it traumatized you that much, huh? Apparently. Now that that one didn't traumatize me as much as a naked granny. <laughs> that was the one that scared me the most. Stanley's head. I wasn't really expecting it. I expected to see Stanley's head somewhere, but not in that scene. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to do the whole library scene again where he pops out of the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, he's this weird spider looking thing. Yeah, but that one like actually looked really good because that, that's one thing I haven't really touched on yet. I know you talked about the granny and all that. But I actually really didn't like the CGI all that much in this one. Uh, although the Stanley's head was pretty good, especially I think because you know they they had his face on it, so that made me buy into it more. Um, but like, yeah, the granny. I mean, yeah, she was freaky, but I just didn't. I, I didn't like buy the design. I don't know. I don't know how to how to describe it. And the same thing, like Paul the 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 Paul Bunyan that comes to life. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it was it was freaky, like when it yells in your face, you know, the viewer's face. But, but then you're watching it try to kill Richie, and it's like, but it's just a statue of Paul Bunyan, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was definitely weird, uh, especially because I went back and I was, I was uh, seeing some of the forms that Pennywise took in the first movie, and they just seemed more freaky. I mean, what what do you think about like what he was doing to them in the first movie versus this one? You know, I feel like in the 2017, they really tried to play on the kids' fears more. Mm -hmm. Like, with Stanley in the painting, they did Richie and the Clowns, mm -hmm. they did Eddie with his germophobic ways. Mm -hmm. And this one, they really just took anything. It's like, hey, let's scare them. Yeah. Like, the granny <laughs> thing, I don't think it, it really, like, traumatized Beverly. Like, they could, I feel like it would have been better if they did something with her dad. Because that would have been way more scary. I didn't want to see a naked grandma doing this in the background. <laughs> That's what scared me. <laughs> it looked like this freaking noodle. <laughs> Well, that's that's the one thing it's that uh, that happened in the original was like when Beverly goes back to the old house, she still she still meets an old lady that the the setup is still the same. But what the freakiness happens in that one, is that the old lady turns into a mummified version of her dad. And so, I don't know if you remember that, but she's 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 uh he's talking to her, but she he's the old lady, he's got a mummified face, but then you hear the dad's voice. Um I guess know, I yeah. didn't notice that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just noticed some <laughs> granny parts. <laughs> no, well that's what I'm saying the original mini series is what I'm oh, talking right. about, yeah. All right. But, you know, just little things like that. Yeah, you're right. In in the first one, Pennywise did focus more on their fears. And maybe that's what it was about this one is that the the scares did seem more random. Uh, but but anyway, so we finally get to the end where, you know, this is the one that I know that everybody was holding their breath about. It's like because in the original miniseries and I'm sure even in the novel, the basic idea of Pennywise's final form is that of a giant spider. And I know in the 1990 miniseries, it looks horrible, especially by today's standards. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really like the spider in the miniseries. It just kind of felt like, oh, yeah, that, that's cool, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, you know, here they go with a different design. They, 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 uh, it's basically a spider, except they give it the torso of Pennywise. Uh, and I think he has the spider arms. Mm -hmm. So... I thought it was an interesting choice because, you know, we've we've seen the clown form the whole time, so it might have been a little off-putting, I guess, if you just would have made him go full spider. At least this way, he could still talk, he could still taunt them. So I, I do understand this choice. I I know you said you really liked this design. Yeah, I really I really like this design because you really get to see more of Pennywise instead of just a spider that goes. <laughs> you actually like get to hear him speak still taunt them do all that like you said mm -hmm. you know i feel like it just really fits him more yeah and that that's another thing about the way they finally defeat pennywise is that and this is one of those things you know how people always say well it's just that the book was better you know mm -hmm. i don't know that that's necessarily the case in this one because i haven't read the book but i've read like what happens in that scene i it seems to me like what stephen king probably described in his novel was just hard to translate on screen because they literally just start like making fun of him <laughs> making fun <laughs> of pennywise making him feel bad 
so it was really weird it was like all of a sudden they became the bullies <laughs> i don't know how to describe yeah. it you know? you know i really didn't like how they took down pennywise because like they could have done that at the beginning of the film then yeah. boom <laughs> film over like yeah. <laughs> they could have eddie didn't have to die nobody had to die they could have just gone like you're so small you suck <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh uh i follow angry joe on youtube and they were talking about so basically all we had to do is have all the youtube comments directed at pennywise oh and that would have defeated him <laughs> and i was like yeah the internet would have defeated pennywise all by itself <laughs> So, so yeah, I mean, it was just kind of a weird little ending with the death. And uh, speaking of death, you want to talk about the one that you said actually brought you to tears? Yeah, Eddie's death. Now, Eddie is my favorite character. I adore Eddie. <laughs> Literally. Now, I, it really hit hard because he was all happy. He's like, Richie, I did it. I did it, Richie. Then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like... Like, I did not expect to burst into tears. I knew it was going to happen. I saw it coming even before entering the theater. It just caught me so off guard that it's like, oh, my God, he's dead. Yeah, yeah but the the whole, you know, um, you know, twist with, with Richie being gay and being in love with Eddie made it that much more tragic. <laughs> um, and yeah. then, you know, like he goes to the end and he goes to the bridge and he, car you know, He's been carving, I guess, their initials into that bridge, and he just keeps going back and, you know, redoing it as time has worn away at it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I mean that that was probably uh, a lot more meaningful than the uh, Beverly and Ben <laughs> uh, finally yeah. hooking up. Because <laughs> like I knew the Beverly and Ben thing was going to happen anyway, um, so that really wasn't a surprise but the richie and eddie thing that was really something now mm -hmm. ready has been a constant ship through the fandom since mm -hmm. uh, who knows how long yeah. and they're like mm, yeah let's add this in here <laughs> and i really liked it to be honest i know a lot of people didn't but i liked it it added, i feel like it added a lot more to richie's character mm -hmm. and, and even eddie's it just added a lot more to them i feel like yeah yeah, and you know they they both had you know different things going on like um, like with Eddie in the original miniseries, his mom was actually still alive and and they portrayed her more of like the snobby rich lady, to whereas in this the twenty seventeen uh, she was just I don't know she was like lazy and you know not mm -hmm. wanting to help him and so it was a different portrayal, and then so even when he was. Uh, an adult like he they showed that he ended up marrying a woman who was just like his mother <laughs> you know yeah because she's uh yelling at him i thought that was interesting i wouldn't expect for him to marry someone like his mom <laughs> um that was took me off guard a bit too and i was like oh man why'd you do that <laughs> <laughs> it's it's actually a complex that some people suffer so um so that was interesting that they delved into that but yeah, I mean, the whole Beverly and Ben thing, you know, they, they even try to put more emphasis on the importance of the poem. That's how they are able to get out of Pennywise's, you know, vision that he's putting them, uh, you know, both dying at the, uh, at the same time. Uh, one thing that I found interesting is that they totally um, changed Bill's wife's um, story. I don't know what it was in the book, but in the original miniseries, you know, she was very supportive of Bill. She, she even came to Derry searching for him and actually ended up encountering Pennywise and she saw the deadlights and, you know, put her in a coma. And there was a really cool scene at the end of the miniseries, which actually what you were talking about earlier, uh, silver, the bike was much more relevant in the miniseries because, you know, it was like his, it was his thing. Like, and, and it, it was his childhood and it's the thing that, you know, he gets on the bike with her as adults and, you know, they ride through dairy and, and that's, you know, I don't know. I thought it was a cool moment. It's, it's how she breaks the coma, basically. Mm -hmm. the And then in this one, you know, Silver's kind of in the, it, almost like Henry Bowers. Like Henry Bowers and Silver were both like, oh, yeah, we got to put these in there, you know. <laughs> but then Bill's wife at the very beginning, she's an actress, I guess, in the movie that, that he was uh, a part of and... They just show real quick that they're having problems, I guess. And so you're not supposed to feel bad when later on, you know, you think Beverly and, and Bill are going to get together because they actually kiss. And then you're just supposed to forget that he's married. So it was just really weird the way they yeah. treated Bill and his wife in this one. So, Yeah, that was definitely really weird. Like, I 
I thought Bill, he often has, like, strong bonds with these characters, so I thought he had, like, a stronger bond with his wife. Apparently not. She <laughs> went, he's like, yeet, yeah. and is like, what's up, Bev? <laughs> So, uh, so we didn't get to do, uh, you know, it 2017, uh, because the show didn't exist yet. But, um, so I was just thinking about, you know, what would I have given it if, it, you know, we had been around, um, I probably would have given it an eight out of 10, uh, because I really did enjoy the kids. Um, you know, I, I did think Bill Skarsgård did a really good job as Pennywise in that one. Uh, so it was just a, a straight up enjoyable, well put together movie. Um, what, what did you think about just the 2017 on a scale of one to 10. No, I really love the 2017 version. It was, it is my favorite movie for like a really long time now. Um, I would have to give it like a 10 out of nine, at least. I freaking adore that movie. I love it. (laughs) I don't know why I do. It's just been something I like attach myself to maybe because like I'm a kid, I'm around their age. So I'm able to relate to them a lot more than an adult would, you know? Mm-hmm. No, and that's interesting you bring that up because, I mean, that's the way I felt about the 1990 miniseries. You know, I really loved that that group of kid actors, the way they portrayed everybody. And then, you know, the second half of the adults, I mean, they were fine, but it was definitely the weaker of the two, mm-hmm. of the two parts. And unfortunately, I feel like that's the same case here. Although I do think the adult actors are stronger this time. Um I think the the thing with 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 Pennywise and and the way that he d- decided to like scare them and stuff just brought it out a little bit for me because it didn't seem as relevant and and uh, just some of the technical stuff like I said I just really didn't like the CGI. I feel I feel like I wish horror movies would get away from CGI mm-hmm. and do more practical effects. I know sometimes it might be more expensive that way, but you know, it might be worth it. I know that this film kind of opened a little bit lower in the opening weekend than the original. And I feel like some people, <laughs> either they remember what happened in the first miniseries and they're like, no, we're not going to go watch that. <laughs> but um, we don't care what you do to the spider. <laughs> but, I, I'm, but I'm not going to be harsh on this one either because I, I did enjoy it. Um, so I think I'm just going to give it a 7 out of 10. So what did you think? Uh, what are you going to give this one? I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Um, the CGI thing, I didn't really notice it. But I wish they would have really played on their fears a bit more, like we mentioned earlier. They didn't really play with their fears. It was like, oh, random scare, here you go. Mm -hmm. If they had done that more, I I probably would have given it a 9 out of 10. Mm -hmm. But the adult actors really portrayed the personalities of the kids still really well. Eddie was pretty much still the same. (laughs) Richie and Eddie. Uh, Bill was the same for the most part. Almost all of them were just older versions of their kids' selves. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I uh, hope you guys have had a chance to see it. If you haven't, you know, definitely go check it out. I don't know that there's anything else coming out for now. So if you didn't catch it the first opening weekend, definitely go check it out. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's worth watching. Um, but, of course, you're going to have to decide whether what you think about the ending. So, uh, But just want to thank uh, all of you who have subscribed so far. Uh, we're, we're getting real close to 200 subscribers, so keep sharing keep uh you know keep uh, liking the videos and uh, let us know if there's anything that you want us to continue to review uh, by this point we've got a lot of different uh kinds of reviews on the channel and so that's part of you know being pop culture related we just want to make sure what turn off the lights lila lila oh the lights are back you want a balloon joe no i hate balloons Ha <laughs> ha